What up, everybody? Everybody, what's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the What's Up, Everybody podcast right here, of course, with my co-host, Sweet Tinas. Sweet Tinas. We're back at it, man. <laughs> it missed a week. Else. I was going to say it, but I didn't. Can't say it. We missed a week. Yes. Memorial Day weekend. I know. Hanging out. Salute to the veterans. You guys are awesome, but we're back, man. Yes, and I'm glad to be back, Sweet T, because got some cool stuff coming up. A lot of cool stuff's coming up. A lot before of cool we, stuff happening. Before we get into that, interrupting how you been, me, man? you know what I mean? Sorry, dude. Just want to know how you been. How's we, everything going? You asked that like you weren't with me. Well, I know, but I'm talking like you know. Besides this weekend, good man. Good. Wanted to get that out of the way first. Yeah, that, you know? that needed gotta, that needed to happen. Yeah, gotta 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 make sure Sweet Tea's feeling right. You know, mm-hmm. sweet. Thanks, man. You're welcome, dude. I love you, bro. How about you, man? Going good. Everything's going really good. Good. That's what yeah. I like to hear. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, dude? Good, man. No, but um, so yeah, lots, bro. Lots going on. Lots happening. So what's happening, bro? <laughs> well, I mean, we've got obviously some pretty cool. We we were we were. Gone to Michigan this past weekend. Yeah, a lot of fun stuff. We we're out there with Chris Wyman, his camera guy. Y'all got to we got to finally meet him. Yeah, I don't know if you've met him before. Super nice guy. Yeah. Uh, Z, uh, C, Seki. 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 Yeah, is his name. Very nice guy. But yeah, we got to hang out with Chris in Michigan. Got to ride in the world's fastest UTV or ATV. Maybe whatever like UTV ATV. ATV I, I've never heard of UTV. I've heard of UTV, but like... I've only called it ATV. Yeah. But anyway, the fastest ATV in the world. It was 1,300 horsepower and 2JZ engine, 76 millimeter turbo. That was the fastest I've ever been in my entire life. I've been in some pretty fast stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, we did the Richard Petty experience. And this was on dirt. This is a dirt track. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't, yeah. didn't mention that. Yeah. The tires on this thing was ridiculous. I mean, they were like cupped. They had like spoons on the tire to scoop mm-hmm. up everything. I mean, it left them huge rooster tail as as we went by. But I've never been, I've never felt that G in my life. I was so upset that you did not do it. I know. Film you got to you got to get that footage of me doing it. I felt bad. Filmer. I know. Just sacrificing it. <clears throat> I know you wanted to. Now, thirteen hundred horsepower. That's decent, right? That's that's a lot of horsepower, especially. In a UTV, which is which is basically nothing, it's like a yeah. go kart. Yeah, thirteen hundred horsepower in a go kart. It's you ridiculous. Know? God, I mean, just feeling it. Okay, I thought I was gonna die for like three seconds. That entire three seconds, I'm going to die, and then it was over. I was like, okay, I'm safe. Mm-hmm. But that's how fast it was going down that the dirt track. If you haven't seen that yet, like I've I posted it up on Instagram. Go check that out. It's nuts. Are we gonna do a video on that? Are we gonna do a yeah, yeah. YouTube we'll do video? A video? Yeah, we'll do, we'll do we'll, we'll give you guys a YouTube video on the goings downs of last weekend. What we did, mm-hmm. but we had a lot of fun, man. That was the first time Chris was flipping out. He rode in that thing, yeah, flipping like he was like, "This is the scariest I've ever been in my life." And Chris is a pretty scary guy. Yeah, if you don't know him, he looks a pretty scary guy, but mm-hmm. he's really a teddy bear. But anyway, it was awesome. I I want one. I do, just to say I have it, but I would never... I don't understand how that guy kept that thing on the track. That's what I want to know. How did he keep that on the track? I have no idea. It was zooming. It looked like it was going straight from the outside, but when you're in it, you're doing this all the way down. You're fishtailing it, it feels like. And at any moment, you can go off that thing and hit the guardrail going like however fast that thing went. At least a million miles an hour. Yeah, that's what it felt like. Minimum. Anyway, had fun. One million weekend. MPH. <laughs> we got to see a cool band. Some guys <clears throat> from Nashville. They came. They came to Michigan. Had a little, little honky tonk. You know what I mean? A little honky tonk. Little honky tonk. Country in Michigan. Had to ride a one wheel. Shout out to one wheel. Those things are pretty cool. Oh yeah, those are pretty fun. You guys know what a one wheel is? It's like a skateboard version of a. 
what are those things called? Hoverboard. A hoverboard. Yeah. yeah. You see people on beaches riding those things around all the yeah, time. Yeah, they've been going viral. People sitting on lawn chairs on them. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But I skirting fifteen hundred bucks for one yeah. of those. It's like nah, man. It's like a three hundred dollar invention. <laughs> three hundred bucks max, not fifteen hundred. That's ridiculous. Fifteen to sixteen hundred. Why? Bro. Why? What? What makes it that expensive? I don't get it. Golly, it's just one wheel. I'm gonna yeah. buy a unicycle. That's like thirty. Bucks. I can ride a unicycle. Yeah. Can you ride a unicycle? I could ride a unicycle. Yeah. yeah. They don't teach kids that anymore. At least not that I know of. When we were in school, like our gym wasn't, I mean, we, we did some basketball and some stuff like that, but it was mostly, they taught us how to like to be in a circus. If we mm-hmm. wanted to go from elementary school right into a circus, that was our gym. Mm-hmm. They taught us how to ride a unicycle, six foot unicycles, juggle. Yeah, it's crazy. Ju- uh, uh, jump roping. We were the, t- I, was a t- I was considered a tumbler because I knew how to flip and stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I just had to throw that out there. I remember those days. It was fun. We, had, we were called the gym. Skippers. The Skippers. The Skippers. We would be in the uh, the Simpsonville Christmas Parade going down just skipping away. Just jump, <laughs> our jump jumping ropes. ropes. <laughs> oh, and then, and then we got into, man, I'll never forget that Christmas parade we did where we did demo team flips down at the oh, whole day. Oh, yeah. And, and we could not walk. So our demo team shoes have zero soul. Demo team is a team that we used to have of – a bunch of different types, you know, students, um, older folks. My dad was on it. Obviously, Stephen was on it. I was on it. So there was a, a good mix of different types of students, and we would go to different um, fairs. Schools. Schools. Halftime shows. We did halftime for hockey games on the ice. Yeah. We did halftimes for basketball games. Firming games, yeah. People fell. <laughs> um, but we would go out, and we would just spread awareness, recognition for our – our gym, our, our school, and get people to come sign up. And they were always really, really hit. Remember doing yeah. the, the Labor Day Festival? Yeah, they were always hit. Everybody Park. showed up. Like, everybody showed up for our demo team. Yeah, they were like, all right, I'm saying Cardi's got a demo team going. We got to go watch it. You Dude, know, it we would were go a from big like deal. Skippers or whatever, and then everybody piled up for the Upstate Karate. Because we were doing it for years. Since 83, we were doing that. We were yeah. doing demos. And we would do cool stuff. Flipping and fight and flying, scenes. Fight scenes. Weapons. Skits, uh, we funny did. skits. We did the ripple line, oh, uh, like a drill team, bow staff drill team type thing. Yeah, we called a ripple line. Um, Devil went down to Georgia bow skit. Yeah, <laughs> that Dang, was a big dude. popular Matrix. one. Matrix. Yeah, the Matrix skit. That was Matrix the best. Matrix skit. Most tiring fight scene ever. That thing was sick. That was always my favorite part of the the demo. The demo. Because we got to just sit back and watch you and Evan do it, or yeah. you and whoever. Me and Grubbs did it for a, for a while. Mm-hmm. And you and you and you did it something too, right? With uh, I used with to do Joseph it with Blasco. Like Blasco. What was that? What we call that? Was it a Matrix skit, or was it like a just a, what? What kind of skit was that? I remember doing the Matrix skit for some reason. Like, I think I've done it with you before. Over the Matrix skit, yeah. part for a little bit. I think because I had the knee injury. Maybe. And that was like the coolest part. But anyways, we had the demo team shoes that we would perform in because we didn't do it barefoot because we were on the mat, off the mat. We perform on asphalt and all kind of stuff. But they had no soles, no cushion, and one Christmas parade, which was like a what, like a three mile stretch that yeah. we walk. Yeah. And um, we're in the parade. We're again just this is the type of stuff that we did to get to where we're at. <laughs> we were the constantly doing stuff. Going to schools. Yeah, doing Red Ribbon Week. Remember Red, Red Ribbon Week? I mean, we were always Career days. doing stuff. We literally, there was, there was a, there was, I mean, we don't do it anymore because you don't, you just can't go, go in an elementary school anymore, right? Yeah. I just mean, a, for, they don't, they, they hardly do any of that stuff. No, and, and kids loved it. We would go there for Red Ribbon Week, obviously, do like demos. Me and Tony would do demos. Career day. And then they would have like these fall festivals too that we would go to, which was always a hit. Our demo mm-hmm. team was always a hit. And just bring awareness to, you know, no bullying. We did a no bullying tour. Mm. And there was always between like January, February, March. Well, that was the time where we went to like every school in our county. Just we about. Were, it, was, it was crazy. But anyways, we did the, the parade, no souls. And one year we were like, all right, we're going big, guys. We're doing flips. As many flips as we can. And diving shoulder rolls on the concrete. Diving shoulder rolls on asphalt. <laughs> And we did it. We rocked it. We round, did. round off backflips, 360 backflips, aerials, side flips, diving shoulder rolls. But and my no, calves. No, yeah, but but check this out. So the diving shoulder rolls, so you really run and you just dive? 
right? But we would get so flipped. I can't do it anymore because of my knees. But I could dive over my dad, who was like 6'2", mm-hmm. and roll on the asphalt. And we just sacrificed our backs, our bodies to do, go all the way down that thing. Even our other demo team kids were hurt the next day. Mm-hmm. Tony got out of school. I couldn't because those those shoes had no soles. My calves were absolutely fried. I could not walk around school the next day. That's how bad it was. The parade was on a Sunday. Monday, I was like, Mom, I was in the bathroom texting because that was back when you weren't allowed to have phones at school. Mm-hmm. Now they like don't care. You can like do whatever, from what I hear. <laughs> uh, so I'm like texting I'm like mom you gotta come get me I can't walk she's like suck it up I'm like no I'm not gonna move from this spot for four hours you gotta come get me <laughs> so she came and got me it was rough dad dad would massage the, our calves oh, with um, gosh. Canned, canned vegetables he'd put the canned vegetable on our calf and roll up and down the calf I hated pops dad always had the remedy of everything golly and- bro yeah, I, I can just imagine the pain. Even now, I'll end up hurting something, and Dad's like, come here, let me rub it out. I'm like, no. Nah, uh, Dad, you know Dad wants first crack at our injuries before we yeah. go to see anybody. I had, okay, so we had this guy from Long Island come down to do some training with me, and come to find out he had tons of ringworm on his, on his back. Like, we keep our, we sanitize everything at the school. We've never had any kind of ringworm problem, any staff or nothing like that. But this guy came down, been training with him for, for, for a few days, and then he took his shirt off. One after one training session, full of ringworm, and thank goodness I only had one ringworm on my arm. There it is, dude. Look at that. You can see the scar. Yeah. So Dad's like, you know what? I got this. Sweet, you know, Tony or Stephen, come here. So Dad is like, hey, this was this was years ago, <laughs> by the way. This wasn't like last week. This was like years years ago. ago. So he thought he could just freeze this thing off of my arm with. There's like a can that you can use, and it sprays air at like a uh, uh, keyboard. keyboard. Y'all know the whole deal. You turn it upside down, then like pure it's ice cold. comes out yeah. of it. So he decided to try to freeze it off. <laughs> he would turn that thing upside down, and literally, it felt like five minutes he did that to my arm, thinking it was just going to die. And he goes to wipe my arm off, and just layers of skin just came off of my arm. And I was like, never again will I let my dad just just – Try experiment on our inj- on my injuries. So now he's like, hey, let me let me let me let me try something. I'm like, no, Dad, you're not going to try anything anymore. Super glued my head back together. Yeah, yeah, he super yeah he super glued all but all of our heads together. He's a big big fan of the super glue. Busted the back of my skull open. Super glue it. You know. Yeah, he loves he loves to try to fix injuries, especially when it comes to broken noses. He's a big broken nose he's a, fixer, and he's good at it though. He's really good at fixing broken noses. So he was at Chick Fil A about a year ago. Chick Fil A, y'all. Um, this lady comes you ever up. Heard of it? Yeah, you guys have heard of it. Uh, this lady comes up and her nose is bandaged up or whatever, and she looked like she had just been crying. My dad's sitting there by himself, and he looks up and he asks this lady, "What's what's wrong?" And she said, "I went to go down to do something with my dog. She had a big dog. Dog jumps up, boom, hits her in the nose, breaks her nose." And Dad's like, "Come here for a second." <laughs> And dad straightens her nose out for her, right? I don't even think he asked. I think he just grabbed her by the nose, I don't know, and just straightened her nose out. She cried a little bit, but she literally came back, wrote my dad this big letter, thank you, oh my gosh, my nose, I can breathe now. And then uh, and like three months later, she comes back to the karate school. She shows up, and she was in a car accident expecting my dad to fix her neck. And dad's like, sorry. I, like, I'm like, dad, you can't do that stuff anymore. In the 80s, yeah. 70s, and 80s, you can do that. But nowadays... You're liable. You get sued. You do something wrong. Even though he fixed her nose and she was excited that she could breathe again, um, Dad's like, "All right, I can't. I, I gotta stop." I gotta Necks stop. are dangerous. Yeah. He's like, well, "I'm, I'm, I ain't no miracle well, worker." For for instance, my, you know, he knows firsthand how dangerous necks are. My dad broke his neck as a kid. Broke his neck. Broke his neck. You, you remember the old zip lines, right? Y'all yeah. remember the old zip lines? He went to a buddy's house and. They would climb. They had a zip line up at the top of this tree, and one summer it had grown over. They hadn't used it in a while, and they they would they do they would take the zip line and sling it up to the tree, and well, it ended up getting stuck in some of the branches because they hadn't ridden it in a while. So my dad had the bright idea to just dive out to this thing from the limb and grab a hold of it and slide down. Well, he does, but it like it like slingshots him around, and he's just up in the air flipping like eight times, lands on his neck. 
and it knocked him out, right? And of course, back in the day, obviously, you know, everybody had the remedy to fix stuff, and his and his best friend's dad was like, "Hey, man, I can I can adjust your neck, and you'll be all right," you know. And thank goodness, my dad was like, "Nah," you know, this, you know, he had to he literally had to walk inside with his neck like that. He grabbed his head because he couldn't hold it up. Walked inside. Or he said that whenever he let go of it, he felt like he was going to pass out. He felt like he was going to faint. So the only way he could get relief is to literally hold his head up to keep that separation there. So when he got in, his friends were like, oh, you probably just got a crick. We'll go inside. My dad will fix it. So he said he went inside. He sat down on the couch. And he said he sat down so perfectly into a point where his head was laying back. He felt great. He didn't feel the pain. So when the dad came in to fix his neck, my dad was like, no, I feel okay. Just call my parents. Like, I feel yeah. all right now. Just call my parents. Turns out, fractured his neck. Broke his neck. And if the dad would have adjusted <laughs> it, it could have led to some serious serious damage. Gosh. To you know, Papa I, I, I know now what it feels like for somebody to interrupt my story. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, sweet tea, for, for all the years that I've interrupted your story. It's all right, man. Thank you. I think we just had a breakthrough <laughs> moment here. Yeah, we did. We did. I was in the middle of the story, and you finished it for me. Yeah. Sorry, you know. Sorry about that. I'm trying okay. not to do that in the future. Thanks. Man. I mean, was that planned? Well, you just had some details off. Oh, okay. I had to I had to iterate. Okay, got you. But you got most of the story out. Understandable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You get most of the story out. Yeah. I, I had to add some in there for dramatic effect. Oh, nice. But it was don't real, let your though. parents, unless happened. they're doctors or nurses, try to fix something. Because mm -hmm. they will met, especially an old school dad like mine. Nope. Don't do it. Terrible. But uh, we got some cool stuff happening this weekend, sweet tea. What? UFC 275. UFC what? 275, dude. To the flipping five, dude. To the it's already 275. I had my first fight at UFC 143. I know, bro. Time flies. It was like almost 10 years ago. Crazy. If Nuts. I'm doing my math right, is it 10 years ago? Nine, 10, 10 years? Yeah, yeah. You, 10 you, years. Your first fight was 2012. Golly. Yeah. This was 10 yesterday. years ago, February. Man. First UFC fight. You were like 30 years old making your <laughs> UFC debut. <laughs> I know. I, and, I, and I looked like I was 21. Yeah. I was like, golly, man. I kind of put, put you in this perspective. You had five MMA fights by the time you were 30 years old. Yuri Prohaska is like 28, 29, and he already has like 32 MMA fights. Wait, what's his record? What's, what's 28, 28 wins, 25, 25 knockouts. By, by knockout, and three losses. And check this out. He's had two fights in the UFC. Of course, he was risen champ, yeah. but two fights in the UFC, and he's already fighting for the title. It's crazy. He was, the, he was a, 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 a Czech Muay Thai champion, so he's got some experience, and he's been showing some awesome stuff, but you were 5-0 and at 30. He's... 32 and 0 and he's yeah, not still 28. Lee. That's that's crazy. That's crazy. Well, I mean, obviously the 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 upbringing and the popularity of the UFC was different coming up cuz was coming up cuz I, you know, focused on kickboxing at the time, but still that's crazy amount of MMA fights. It's a crazy amount of MMA fights. Yeah. I'm getting the Oh, card, you get you get the, the card pulled up. Yeah, get the card pulled up, sweet tea. I know we got Two title fights on the line. We have uh, a, a rematch happening. Um, I don't even. I, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce her name, Sweetie. You're going to have to do it. But we got some good fights on this card, and I, I'm I'm really focused and interested on the last three. That's it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm interested in the last three fights. As and who are they, Sweetie? Wait, before that, do we have anybody interesting on the undercard or? Uh, well, a name a name of note on the undercard is a guy named Andre Fialo, and the reason I bring him up is because he's fought like three or four times in like a month. Golly! So he fought April sixteenth. Is he Russian? April. No, Brazil. Uh, uh, Brazilian, maybe. Okay. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's see, it's right here. Portuguese. Okay, so yeah, he's he's Brazilian. Nope, he's from Portugal. Oh, okay. That's what Portuguese is. I thought you meant he just spoke Portuguese. Maybe. No, he's from he's le no he's from Portugal. Oh, okay, sweet. Yeah, so he's Portuguese. He's legit Portuguese. In Brazil, they speak Portuguese. Right, but they're right. Brazilian. I got you. you know I, mean? I got you, sweet dude. Thanks for that. Just like we speak English, but we're, <laughs> but we're not English. Yeah. You know, we're the we're the better. Yes, sir. We're. That's right. America. 
Anyways, he's fighting for like the third time in a month. Pretty impressive. Been been crushing dudes, finishing them. He's a welterweight as well. Ooh, what does he look like? Um, have I, so, have so you he, seen him? So he made his debut against Michael Payara, the the Flipmeister. Oh, and he lost in the decision. He looked tired. He was like a short notice fight. Got you. Came in there. He lost. Striker. Yeah, for the most part. All right. He he beat Miguel Beza, Caramel Thunder, who was an up and coming prospect who's, mm-hmm. who's been on the on the down. The he, he beat him recently, right? Yeah, Luke yeah, we Muhammad. Were, yeah, that card. Then he fought on UFC 274, which was three weeks later. He won knockout round one, and he's fighting again. Less than a month later. Man, how old is Jake this guy? Matthews. He's just trying to he's get in. 28. Everything. 28, still young guy, man. Let's mm-hmm. go. Good for him. Let's. All right, so that's a that's one to keep my eye out on for sure. Yeah. You know? Speak, did we ever talk about the Michael Pyara fight? People were like, you should fight Michael Pyara next. Who did he no. just fight? He oh, G- Ponzinibbio. Yeah, Ponzinibbio. And it was a good fight, but he was definitely... This uh, front kicking master, he was like front kicking the, the crap out of him. Out of Ponzinibbio? Yeah. But, and he was less flippy, you know? Yeah, he's definitely made a fool. Turn around. Like, I'm trying to save some energy now. And, you know, Paula Harris, Paula Harris, not Paula Harris, Ponzinibbio is just known for his like leg kicks and mm-hmm. just throwing bombs. But, you know, Pereira was putting it on him. Mm-hmm. He had some good, he, I mean, it was, it was kind of slow. It was just a striking match. And first two rounds, no, is it first two rounds, I think? And the third round, Ponzinibbio started to pick it back it up. Was it was like, too late. It was like, it was close. The first round was Payara. Second round was close. Still kind of leaned towards Payara and then Ponzinibbio. Payara looked massive, too, three. compared to Ponzinibbio out there. Maybe yeah. it was just his height, but he looked huge. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we got, we got uh, Coco Main. Coco Main, we got um, Zhang Wei Li. It was a ghost, man. I don't know. And um, Joanna Janjacek. Now, this is a rematch. Joanna Janjacek, it's been forever since we've seen her fight. It feels yeah. like to me. Like, when was the last time she fought? Um, Sweetness of the teasness. And Zhang Wei Li is obviously former champ. Yep. Uh, I'm not really, I don't remember how that fight went. Was it, was it a knockout? No, it was a decision. Okay, it, was it was like a, a decision. fight of the year. Like, oh, there was wow. Like, tons of strikes thrown. And Joanna is known for her striking and, and just mm-hmm. her, you know, she's not known for her her knockouts, but she just her relentlessness, just nonstop, pop, 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 pop. She just peppers people's up and beats them up. She was a Muay Thai champ, I think, at one point. Yep. Uh, she so beat, she beat, did she beat Shevchenko or did Shevchenko beat her? Because they would fight on the, on the surface. Yeah, Shevchenko would beat her. Would beat her. Okay. Yeah, Valentina. I don't ever see Joanna beating Shevchenko. Yeah. Shevchenko, not only is she a high-level striker, but she's got power. She's dangerous. And, dude, her wrestling and jiu-jitsu is just on point. Speaking of her... B- before, before, okay. okay. Sorry. We got to finish. Sorry. Young Jacek. Yeah. Young Jacek is two and four in her last six fights. Mm. So she's won two, lost four. Her last fight was actually a split decision loss to Zhang Wei Li in March of 2020. Wow. So she's fighting a year later. She's had a so, year off. What do you think? Winner of this fights for the title again? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Because that whole Rose fight. Oh, yeah. Carla Sparza. Oh, my gosh. Are they going to run it back? Or are they, did they both just automatically get cut after that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought that was going to happen for sure because that was, that was you know, I, I, and, and during that fight, my entire second fight came up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we talked about this before in the past. So at least with y'all's fight, there was this constantly a an, a potential of something happening. But nothing you really getting knocked him. out or yeah. you knocking him out. This fight, there was just not even a potential. It was yeah. like you, there was not one second where you were like, okay, something's about to happen. It was more yeah. just like they're yeah. trying to make nothing happen. Well. Anyway, but so anyways, that's, that's yeah. So winner of this fight should fight for the belt. Yeah, again, agreed. Unless they do the Rose rematch, which I don't see why they would. But you know, maybe the winner of this fights Rose. Yeah, Rose has already pieced up both of these people. Oh yeah, no, she beat both of them twice. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that round kick with 
She Wayne knocked Joanna out twice, didn't she? Yeah, dude. Was it? Yeah, she, she fought on my car when I fought Vicente Luque. And then she beat Wei Lee twice. Yeah. She knocked Wei Lee out, and then she beat her in a decision. Mm. So, so I guess one of them fights her again. We'll see. Or just jumps past she, her and yeah. goes to the to the belt. Who knows how that's going to work? Yeah, she fought. She lost the split to Rose. Okay. Now can we move up? Come in. If you must. Let's go to Come in. I think we've talked enough about Joanna. Joanna chicka chicka chicka. So who's Valentina fighting? Valentina is fighting um Tyla Santos. I'm now, gonna be honest with you. Yeah. I don't really know much about her. I yeah, know Tyla she Santos. Is, she is on the on the up and up. Grappler, stud. striker. Let me see if I can get some. Because if she's a striker, up. she's in for a rough day. I mean, even if she's a grappler, I mean, you know. What? Valentina Shevchenko's. I just what? Googled her and she said she's not unbeatable. Tyla Santos says Valentina Shevchenko has flaws in her striking. Dude. Any ground. Like, Dude. You can't, yeah, I you mean, can't be sent. Like, maybe you can call it her ground game, but you cannot be calling out her striking. No. Unless you're like an 11 time world champion. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't be, you can't be saying that, bro. But let's see. She's a stud. She's from Brazil. Okay. She's like 19 and one. Ooh, good record. Who'd she get beat by in the UFC? Um, she's 19. She has 10 knockouts. Okay. She's got some power then. It looks like she's a striker. She did lose in the UFC via split decision. Against? It was her first fight in the UFC legit against Mara Romero Barella. Sounds like a dude. I have, I have no idea who that is. Nope. Mara. Mara. Then she beat Molly McCann, Jillian Robertson. Now, to her defense, she has 10 KOs, but she hasn't had a stoppage win in her last one, two, three, four, five, six fights. Okay. Well, she submitted, but she didn't knock anybody knock yeah. out. Yeah. I hope to see a nice spin back kick from Valentina. She's got the prettiest spin back kick ever. Not only that, leg Valentina kicks. Valentina is just sharp. Yeah. So Valentina, beautiful sidekick, like you were saying. Her striking has been amazing. Always. She's super sharp. Always on point. You, she's, she's, she's never, like, not ready, like, not focused. Right. She's always, like, hyper-focused on everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like, she, yeah, you see it in her, in, in her fights. Like, she's never really... Lazy let anywhere. anything. Yeah, never really distracted, always ready for anything the whole entire time, which is exhausting because I, I felt that way when I fought Roy McDonald because I wasn't really sure where the fight was going to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was just like, uh, just you have to be ready. And it was exhausting mentally to be able to do that, but, that, but that, that's her every step of the way. Yeah, so um, Santos is tough, but it's 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 so hard to pick against Shevchenko. She unless is she gets caught in a submission goat. or something, yeah. which yeah. it happens. But I call she's going to go out there and crush this girl. The only person that's going to give her or each other a uh, a challenge is Nunez. What about Pena? I mean, do you think? Pena. I think they sh or they're running it back, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, she beats her twice, then yes, Pena. Mm -hmm. You know? But do I see her beating Nunez the second time? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, when you're the champ for as long as she's been champ. In two weight classes. In two weight as classes. As she's been. You kind of you kind of get a little lackadaisical. Kid, I'm not married. saying she is, but I'm just thinking mindset can get a little faulty. When it comes to like, oh man, I'm gonna go out there and crush this person. It's like, oh god, here we go. I'm just gonna go out there and beat the crap out of this girl, and just didn't expect it. Again, you know, yeah, and, and how much of her own hype did she believe? Like, how, was she was she to the point where she was just kind of like, I don't need to train. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, so in that particular case, her fight had gotten canceled because apparently she had sinus issues. Like the first time they were supposed to fight, mm -hmm. Pena and. Nunez. Nunez and Pena was like, I saw her eating chocolate cake on her Instagram. So right there, you're kind of like, all right, well, she's not super motivated for this fight. Yeah. And then the second fight rolls around, and she just got tired. Yep. She couldn't finish. She couldn't knock out Pena and got tired and submitted. She had to cut to 135. You know, she's typically fighting at 145. And I like Pena. I like Pena, too. She's, she's great. But it's like when you get a motivated Amanda Nunez, and I think maybe this – 
she had to do this in order to get motivated. Mm-hmm. You know, she had to feel that loss. All right, dad, gum it, man. And hear all of the crap talk yeah. that Pena puts out there, which mm-hmm. is constant. So we might see a different Amanda Nunes this next go around. Donna, do they even have something set up for that fight? Yeah, they're doing Ultimate Fighter right now. Oh, okay. Okay. They're on the show right now. So, so I don't know when the fight is officially scheduled for, but. Now, is Pena doing like right the, the, the Michael Bisbing versus Dan Henderson uh, kind of trash talk? She's trash talking. Um, I don't think there's much trash talk to the face happening, though. Okay. I don't know. I haven't been watching this one. I haven't watched it really since. Speaking of Dan, shout out to my man Dan. We got to hang out with him this weekend, too. Yeah, yeah. Super cool, cool guy. Cool hearing his stories yeah, and all that man. stuff. But I saw something where Nunez was like, yeah, I tell her to say it in my face, and she won't say it in my face. She's like, I tell, you know, I hear all this stuff you're saying online, but say it to me here. I'm here now. Yeah. And Pena won't say it. Supposedly, that's what Nunez said. That's the kind of chick Nunez is. You know what I mean? She's like a cyborg, I think. Just call you out. Yeah. Golly. I feel like she is like a cyborg. We were at that International Fight Week that one time, and Cyborg about got it in with somebody. Mm-hmm. I think he, I think she slapped her. Yeah, Ron DeMarcos, I Yeah, think. dude, slapped her. July dude. 30th, Dallas. Ooh. All right, I'm excited. I'm excited. I bet you Amanda Nunez is going to come out. Fire. And you got to think, Shevchenko pulls the win off this this go around again. I mean, I don't know how too many 125 prospects coming up. If she crushes this girl, she's got to think about going back up to 35 and trying yeah. to get that belt. Cause from from Nunes. And the thing is, they, they, they're they the ones, besides Pena, the last fight, they're the only ones that gave each other. And it was controversial for those wins. I thought Shevchenko won the See? second one. See? It was, like, it was it was it has to happen again. Yeah, it was super close. Um Nunes pressed pressed forward a lot, but Shevchenko landed a lot of strikes backing up. So it was kind of like that. What do you think if Ronda Rousey came back? How would she do you think she would just last with like no, what, like not not, not, a, not a chance. Yeah. Unless she really got serious and took it serious to the point where she was willing to Obviously, she's super talented. Yeah. Obviously, she has skills. Obviously, she can do it. But is she willing to do it? With the type of the, the caliber of fighters nowadays, she's like, she just get crushed. Yeah, thanks to her, there's a whole different breed of fighter out there now. Yeah. I mean, she did kind of pave the road for the for the female fighters, mm-hmm. but still, like now. Really gave them a platform to say, all right, I want to do this, and this i got to train, train hard. It's worth doing because I have this opportunity. I've now. always wanted to see that. You take some of those old school champions and put them up against the champions now, how would they do, right? Like George St. Pierre and Usman, right? Uh, you know. You you would have to do it on a completely level like playing field in terms of age and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, true. Yeah, because GSP is what, 40 now? Close he's 40. to it. Yeah, because no, yeah. I think he's like a few years older than I am. Mm-hmm. And he looks great, dude. It looks like he hadn't changed a but lick. But still, 40 is different than yes, it is. You know, early 30s, yeah. even. But, you know, at their prime. That's that's what I would love to see. I know nowadays, but like in their prime. It's the great debate. It's the yeah. great thing. Just be, there was some way in order Bruce to do Lee that. Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Bro, you got to go Bruce Lee. Yeah, you got he, he's, he's a goat. Bro. He's a goat. I was, I was trying to think, of, I was trying think, think so, of the story you have to say Bruce Lee. of when Jackie Chan played like a, a – a, a, Stunt guy in one of Bruce Lee's films. They went bowling together, I think, or something like that. Him and Bruce Lee. Anyway. Yeah. I think That's I heard that one too. You heard that one? I think I heard that one, yeah. that story a little bit. Well, there you go. Okay, who do you have winning that fight? We never picked the the Coco Main. Coco Main, shoot, man, I'm taking Way Lee. Me too. I think so too. It's been forever. Well, I mean, she's been more consistent than Joanna, but I got Way Lee. I've got Shevchenko, hundred mm-hmm. percent. You just can't, can't, unless you're just trying to win big and be like, you, there's no one that can really say for a fact that Santos is going to beat Shevchenko. Yeah, you can't be like, oh no, dude, she's got it. She's got what it takes. Yeah. So did everybody else that fought her, and she just demolished them. Demolished. So you, you really can't pick against Shevchenko. No, nope, you can't. And I've had the opportunity to hang out with her for a week. She's really cool. Yeah. And she's a striker, and we gotta like do a collab with yeah, her. Yeah, we stuff. got to. We does she have her own YouTube channel? I don't know. She, if she needs to teach for her. She needs, she needs to teach me her um, her uh, winning dance. You know her. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be a good channel. Good, yeah, good bid for the channel. 
Um, you know, yeah, I'm kind of pulling for for Jan Jacek against Wei Lee, but like just Wei Lee's been more consistent. So who knows yeah. what kind of Jan Jacek is going to show up after a year off. And then finally, main event. This, main, one's, this one's the wild one. Yeah. Let me tell you why it's wild. Number one, Glover Teixeira, I think, haven't faced off against uh, – well, he has, but he lost. Somebody as good as um, – what's his name again? Prohaska. As Prohaska. <laughs> I always forget. Prohaska, but he has fought somebody similar in Alex Gustin, at Alexander least, Gustafson. At least body type-wise. Yeah, right? long, lanky, but he's got mm-hmm. strong power. Uh, and they both throw similar strikes, like the uppercut, right? Mm-hmm. Um Yuri Prohaska loves the uppercut. He loves the flying knee. He is unorthodox. He switches sides. He's got a pace like no other. Um, but he's notorious for getting taken down. You know, he gets back up to his feet, yeah, but he's notorious for getting taken down. With somebody that has experienced and as heavy as Glover, if he gets you down, you're going to you have a very hard time getting back up. Mm-hmm. Or you're going to be exhausted when you do get back up. You know? And that's another thing. Glover Teixeira has really clean boxing and good power in his hands. He's not as long as Prohaska, but he's very clean and he can catch you. Prohaska is known to keep his hands down, throw some stuff from you know wild angles and things like that. And he's been he's been touched a few times, mm-hmm. knocked down, um, and before he was in the UFC, knocked down. He's been hurt in the UFC too. He's been hurt. If Glover can find that chin, I think he he could put him away. But it's finding the chin and getting close enough to do so is going to be the 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 the, the, the challenge here. Mm-hmm. Pure chaos. Yep. Freaking Prohaska is relentless, chaotic. You know, spinning elbows out of nowhere, jump knees, long, lanky. Literally, can do anything at any moment. I think best bet to share a. Yeah, gets them down quick and just controls them on the Gonna ground. Gonna have to. Which you could. Gonna have to. And I and I, you know I like I like to watch Pro Haska, but I'm a big fan of Glover Teixeira in the fact that he's been fought. He's fought the who's who's. He's won some. He's lost some. And he's champ now at 43 years old. 42, 43 42. years old. 42. 42 years old. Two years older than me. Mm-hmm. So WB, who are you taking for that Three fight? Years, pretty much. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Glover. It's just the fact that he's got he's got more options, right? He's got more ways to defeat Prohaska than Prohaska has more, you know, to defeat him. He's got his stand up, yes. But, you know, if Glover can't find that chin, he's gonna have to pressure, get him up against the fence, take him down. Prohaska is very strong, but so is Glover. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the the power match there is pretty, pretty, pretty even. The length definitely goes to Prohaska, but the experience and the well well roundedness. Goes to Glover. So I've got Glover winning. Stats wise. Obviously anything can happen, but just looking at the two, who's got more ways to win this? It's Glover. I want to pick Glover by TKO. Yeah. Because I feel like really? TKO Prohaska. Yeah. The only thing that I fear is that Glover has a tendency to hunker down and just shell up. And I just feel like Prohaska is notorious for throwing this crazy flying knee he's finished a lot of guys with. Mm-hmm. It'd just be prime for that. Fake a jab, let him cover up, flying knee, boom. I'm taking Prohaska by KO. Really? Dude. You're gonna take Prohaska by KO? Okay. Mm-hmm. Hey, you gotta have you gotta have some rivalry here. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, I got Glover. I got Glover winning it. You got Prohaska. We'll see what happens. Throw 100, 200 down on it. 200 cent. Yeah, 200 cent. <laughs> got you, bro. Done, dude. Uh, dude, is it me or is it like you know? Uh, Chris Wyman is a gambler, bro. <laughs> He's this past betting, weekend, bro. he was Corn gambling hole. on Cornhole, which we dominated everybody at Cornhole. We all, I mean, y'all were pretty much the champs. And we beat y'all once, y'all beat us twice. But we're it was, it was stupid close. Stupid close. So if y'all trying to get some Cornhole championships, bro. come see us, bro. I feel like come me and you, us, I mean, we, we played together, right? We just dominated. Who would we beat? Or was it me and Chris? <coughs> I think it was you and Chris. The, uh, yeah, uh, Y'all played Dan. <coughs> yeah, we crushed Dan. Sorry, Dan. Yeah. At one point, it was 20 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> 20 to 1. But anyway. But. Yeah, man. Yeah, dude. This weekend's going to be fire. You guys tune in for that. 
Sweet tea, how you feeling, man? You ready to go home and go to sleep? Yeah. We got we get we literally only got two hours of sleep last night. Coming back, we had like uh, our flight left at. We had to wake up at two a.m., three a.m. No, we woke up at two thirty. Two thirty. Left at three. Drove an hour and twenty minutes to the airport because our flight was at six. Oh, it was like an hour and a half to get to the airport. Yeah, man. And yeah, it was. It was we're. It's rough. I'm right exhausted now. right now. To be honest with you, I didn't sleep very good. I could not sleep for some reason. Yeah. Once I was away, I was like. Ugh. Yeah. I'm just trying to stay awake so I can sleep tonight. That's why I'm drinking coffee, sweet tea. Good. At, at seven o'clock. Perfect. Yeah. Wait, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to sleep. Sweet yeah. tea, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Wake up, ah. Thank you guys for tuning in for this episode. Sweet tea, tell them where they can watch it. You can watch it right here on YouTube, which is what you're doing right now. <laughs> or you can listen to it on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, all the good stuff. Like us, share us. Thumbs up. So don't don't thumbs up us. <laughs> but hit the thumbs up. And uh, yeah, man, spread the word. We're excited about the fights this weekend. Excited to hear what you guys' thoughts are on the fights and all that good stuff. And we got a Q&A coming up. We do. Now, you didn't know about it. Just I threw that know. out there just now. We got a Q&A coming up. We haven't done one in a while, sweet tea. Got to do one, bro. Got to. All right, guys. Y'all catch y'all later. See you next time. Peace. Peace.